You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in Possible. Welcome everybody to the Border War Podcast on the KC Sports Network. We're presented by 360 Vodka. My name is Jared Sutton. I'm joined as always by Jeff Hawkins and Jeff. It is go time, baby. <laughs> border here. War time. That How border we feeling? Is here. Oh, feeling How... good. Feeling good. Yeah. I'm I'm excited for this matchup, man. I got some. I got some Missouri co-workers, man, that, that they're definitely, I mean, it's fun, dude. They're, they're excited for this. Uh, they're psyched the way, excited the way the Tigers have been playing, and they're definitely excited for this, uh, for this border war matchup, man. So I'm excited for it. A lot of history with this matchup, so it's good to see it uh, uh, and, and where it's at right now in, in the up and coming and up in the up. Yep. Isn't it funny though? Like, you know, we're both in Kansas City. I've been doing some media with like Columbia and St. Louis and I just don't think they understand when you're in Kansas City, it's a little different, right? Cause yeah. you know, especially for me growing up, like, you know, I grew up with people that went to, to Kansas. Like there were a few that went to Mizzou, but most went to Kansas. So when you're in KC, it's a little different oh, with yeah. the rivalry. I feel like it's being talked about way more uh, than it is in, in other, you know, aspects of, uh, especially in the state of Missouri for sure. So uh, it's just a little bit different, which I like. I like being oh, yeah. Kansas fans and being in the mix of it. It's been great. We've seen some smack talk on oh, yeah. social media oh, already, yeah. man. Like I, I love it. I think it's great. So I mean, but I um, mean, you know, we we got to get it back to the days like you know when we were playing when that. I mean that. I mean, again, my jaw still pops this day because of that <laughs> because of that rivalry, man. But love every bit. I know it's gonna get there at some point. So I'm going to start, and I, I was thinking about this because last year when we were talking about this game going into to Lawrence, obviously it was it was two totally different stories with both teams, um, but we hit a lot on just the the game in Allen Fieldhouse in 2012, and then we touched yeah. on a lot of games with the rivalry in Lawrence. So I wanted to start just kind of giving you the floor of you know going down <laughs> memory lane of your trips to Columbia. Yeah, back in the day, and there's anything that like jumps out, whether it be you know, hotel pregame, oh, yeah. you know, whatever it is, anything you remember about playing in uh in Columbia and what that experience was like. I mean, I, it was always fun going to Missouri for a couple reasons. One, we always stopped by the Royal Stadium and had lunch and got to run the bases and you know kind of see the locker room that was always a, a cool thing to do but then obviously when you get there like one of the things that I always stood up that i'll always remember man is when uh <laughs> the night before we played them I, I can't remember where I, am i i think i was my sophomore year redshirt sophomore year under coach williams last year and we're at the hotel we're all sleeping and the fire alarm goes off and I mean, come on. We know who all did it. Like, yeah. it was the no. antlers. Like, no secret. We, there. <laughs> because they were waiting for us when we were walking down. <laughs> so we all know who it was. But obviously, it was a false alarm. They, they, uh, they did that to to throw us off. And uh, yeah, they they had us they had us pretty upset. And I know Coach Williams was was really upset because he had to get out of his bed. And you know, you can't hide on that. You have to get out of the bed, and you have to get out of the hotel so we oh uh, that's a that's a memory i'll never forget about what time was this at i'm just curious oh, about like, 2 a.m this... yeah it was, okay yeah there it is. It, i mean we were asleep there it is. like yeah. and we were asleep like we were probably just hitting our the peak of our dreams i mean just about to hit the peak of our dreams and <laughs> here they come bam <laughs> Is there um is there a moment in game that kind of jumps out to or a win or any moment where you're like that was uh that was a huge moment and I mean I I actually think if I remember right you know you're a little bit older than me but I I had gone to Mizzou Kansas at Hearns yeah um but you would have been did you have any games at Hearns because or did you yeah. split Hearns and Mizzou Arena yeah you know I didn't I didn't ooh. I think I got one in Mizzou Arena, okay. and we lost that one. So I'm, I haven't got a win in that. And <laughs> you haven't um, got a win in Missouri, okay? No, I haven't. Because uh, you had three in Hearns. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. uh, well, technically four because I redshirted, but didn't. Oh, that's play. right. That's right. But that's right. Uh, if I had to say, I mean, the shot that Aaron. The the pass that Aaron Mouse threw in the basket. I, I was at that one. Was, that was the one I was at, man. Was I can't insane. even say that was a Absolutely shot. Literally, insane. that was a pass. He passed that one into, and there's another one. Like I mean, I tell all my teams now. I think we were. It was like That's a minute guys, and twenty. Did, did you guys rock the Reds 
the the Kansas. Yeah, I the, think so. The, yeah. yeah, those yeah. are fresh. I love oh, those. Yeah. I think those are fresh. Yeah, and then it's another one. You know where I'll still remember it. Where we had you guys. It might have been the last year in in the Hearns. We had you guys on the ropes, and we were up like I forget nine with a minute and twelve left, and we end up losing the game. So really? yeah, really? yeah. Like, yeah, it was just, I mean, that's why I'll, I'll always tell a team that I coach, like if we're down nine points with about a minute and some change, I'm like, Hey, we lost the game like that. Anything can happen right now. <laughs> that's, right. So. that's when that experience really pays off. It's yeah. a terrible experience. But yes. It's like, I've been here. I know yeah. what this. I'm it not, sucks. I've been, Trust I've been me, in these moments, man. We've all been in the, you yeah. play long enough. You're going to be in those moments for sure. doesn't matter what, you know, high school, college, pro, doesn't matter. You're going to have those games, those moments that like yeah. leaves, leaves the impact. So you're like, yes. I'll never forget yeah. that. I'll never forget that moment. <laughs> no question. When, when you, th- when you think back to, to like playing in, in Hearns, cause I think you have a great perspective because I mean, we had some battles in, in my era, 08 to 12. Yeah. You guys had some serious battles yeah. Yeah. with uh, Kareem and, yeah. you know, Paulding Gilbert, and, and no- yeah. Uh, yeah, Clarence. And, like, those are some great games, man. And those are games that I, like, that's when I was yeah. really bought into the rivalry because it was yeah. just, you guys were rolling – and and but M- Mizzou was a solid team with Quinn. Yeah, you know during yeah. that during that run, like you guys had some 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 serious you know matchups. What was it like playing in Hearns? Because I think it's it's good to remember. Yeah, just the environment that these games were. Allen Fieldhouse speaks for itself, but but Hearns was also a, a very loud environment, an old school yeah. environment as well. Yeah, you know every time we came to Hearns, um, like Missouri always rates like you know, toughest arenas to play in. Obviously, when you kick in that rivalry, like, I thought Kentucky was pretty – I mean, that was a, a hostile environment to play in just because of how loud it can get. But, like, Missouri's, Missouri's like, for sure my top top two, I would say. Sometimes it would depend on how serious it was between K-State and Missouri. But most of the time, we always knew Missouri was a, a hostile environment. It got a little hostile at K-State. Uh, but again, oh, yeah. that's a little oh, yeah. in-state, so it's just not as it's just <laughs> not as vulgar. Like, yeah, you, they hey, hate you us said there, it. But you like... said it. I'm with you. You said it. I'm with you. I but like, you. but but for real though, Missouri was like still to this day one of the toughest arenas we always had to come in and play in because like we knew it was gonna be a battle. Like mm-hmm. every time, like no matter if you guys had a down year. If we had a down year, like it doesn't matter. Like that game, I mean, it's gonna be live. And uh, I mean, credit to you guys as fans because I mean, they brought it when we came in. We just knew coming to that game, it's not gonna be easy. I mean, literally, their six man is their six man is crazy. So <laughs> you better come ready and prepare, otherwise, uh, it's gonna be a long night. Let's dive into this matchup. Um, yeah, a tale of of two different teams. Yeah. The Mizzou side, it's it's a lot of veteran transfers, um, a, a freshman, a talent from KC and Aiden Shaw that we've talked about, um, very athletic. This is a, a Missouri team that, you know, they have Isaiah Mosley, who's a Columbia kid, yeah. and Dewan Harris, who's a Columbia kid. So I want to start there with just what you what, – what, when you put yourself in Isaiah Mosley's shoes or Dewan Harris's shoes, you know, it's a homecoming for both. Uh, it's a huge game for both. Obviously, Isaiah's you know at Mizzou in Columbia, so it's a little bit different. But with Dewan, he's going back to his hometown. He's been in so many, ma- like obviously won a national it's championship right, in the Final Four. <laughs> it's pretty, but this feels yeah. like it could be a little bit of a different feeling oh, yeah. for him. I don't put it past him because I think he's such a composed kid, and I think he's yeah. so tough and mature and smart, and just does everything like blocks out noise and all that yeah. stuff you want in a player. What do you, what do you think go, is going through Dewan Harris's mind right now? Like going home, knowing he didn't get recruited by Mizzou. He goes to yeah. Kansas, wins a <laughs> national championship. There's so many storylines I find interesting oh, yeah. in this matchup. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, if I could break down this matchup, probably it's just going to be like, they're going to be thinking like, who's the, like, Who's the king of the city? Like that's right. Like, 
you like, know, when it comes to this basketball, yeah. They're, they're when it comes to this texting. basketball, I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Winner this, yeah, that we got keys to the city. So, I mean, but again, Mike, you got two guys that that care about that city um, that are going to try to show out for that city. So, I mean, uh, Dewan's going to have a chip on his shoulder as well, you know, saying, hey, you know, I never got recruited there. They never gave me a look. I wanted to be here. I did win a national championship. So he's going to try to find some ways to to create a chip. And so is Isaiah. So they're both going to have ways to try to create uh, a little rivalry amongst themselves within the city that can give them maybe that edge. But um, it's going to be fun to see both of these guys go head to head uh and while they're you know trying to play for their teams and play for their city as well too absolutely yeah i think i think too you look at it i think both these guys could could really be the difference for both teams like i think dewan you know leading the charge not turning the ball over getting guys involved i think isaiah mosley has to be really good um i'm sure he's going to be coming off the bench but i think he's got to play extended minutes and you know, he, he had a DNP against Wichita State. Uh, there was rumors he was sick, and there was other things yeah. going on. He played six minutes against SEMO. So I just feel like there's some unknown with him. But I, I think if he does, you know, if, if Coach Gates cuts him loose and he's playing 20-plus minutes, I think that's going to be a fun matchup to have two Columbia Rockbridge kids, you yeah. know, on Mizzou Arena floor in Mizzou, Kansas. Yeah. Uh, first time back in Mizzou Arena. I think that's just a really cool storyline. And, both those those guys are are really you know they're they're different in ways in terms of position and skill and, and that that type of thing. But both those guys are are just absolute dogs too. I love yeah. the game and it, I, I just I think it's going to be a fun matchup. But oh yeah, um, when when you talk about you know Jalen Wilson, I think is the best player in this game. I think he's the guy that I circle for Kansas. He's averaging twenty one yeah. and nine. Um, he's passing the ball really well. Like, I think Grady Dick could shoot Mizzou out of this game. Mizzou has struggled to guard the three-point line. I think that's a big area uh, of, of this game. Kevin McCuller's got to be good defensively. But I think Jalen Wilson, and we'll see, you know, what Kobe Brown Kobe Brown brings for Mizzou. But I think it's a tough matchup for Mizzou trying to match Jalen Wilson uh, in terms of his impact on both ends of the floor, rebounding. You know, both these teams play a little bit of a small ball type of lineup, yeah. but I think – you know, Kansas has the the young bigs there. Um, you know, when you talk about is Zuby coming off the bench, you know, given minutes for for KJ, and, and is there does does Kansas go big? Do they play small? Does Zach Clements get in this game? You know, what does that really look like? Is Uday coming off the bench? It, I'm really curious to see yeah. the five position too, and just both these teams playing more of a smaller lineup. But will Bill Self go big? to kind of yeah. exploit that or do they stay Jalen Wilson? Do they stay KJ go small and really play to their strengths, which is what Kansas has done so far this year. Yeah. And you know, with them having this week off too, a lot of, a lot of time off. Uh, that's one of the things that the fans haven't got to see. Cause normally there's a game, you might see some growth in another player. I think that is a big question. You know, what will, what will coach self do? Will he go big? Will he go small? Have, have Zuby and, you know, uh, Ernest and those guys and Zach, have they, are they showing coach what, what he needs to see in order to feel truly confident that they can give him valuable minutes. So I think that's going to be a question um, uh, on what he's going to do as far as, uh, that look and you know how he handles his rotations and subs uh this game uh but i think you know worst case scenario he's gonna stick to what he's sticks to stick to what has been working with and again i think that that goes to uh at the top with with jalen wilson you know i uh, i think he can get the name right now just mr consistent he's been very consistent very efficient this year uh very locked in um so I really look for Jalen to, to have a have a great game, be locked in. Uh, and a lot of these guys are really starting to understand what the rival each year, each year goes by. This is their second time really kind of understanding the rival. So I think these guys, you know, they'll be locked in. Don't want to be locked in from a, a from a different avenue uh, with it being a hometown game. But, you know, a lot of these guys are starting to get the gist of what the rivalry slightly feels like. <laughs> and I know for Grady Dick, you know, I know he's, you know, been in this area and and heard about the rivalry. So it's going to be interesting to see what he can do in this type of an environment. It's a different environment. And, you know, it's not the 
it's not like the friendly that was last year. And, you know, with the, uh, the uh, charity event that raised uh, over a million dollars that they did a while back as well, too. You know, this is, this is real when it gets home and home now, it's not that neutral site. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how these young guys handle this environment that I thought was, you know, definitely top two. And, you know, in all my experiences playing in opposing, uh, arena so it's going to be a fun game i think these guys are going to be locked in you know coach self does a really good job of of getting these guys game prepared and 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 ready for what you co call quote unquote uh war which will be this border war so uh they're going to be locked in they're going to be talking about the history of this uh so uh, i expect these guys to to come ready to play so let's transition here to to really you know you're you're touching on a point that i wanted to kind of build on is a lot of these guys, they're not familiar with yeah. Mizzou, Kansas, the Mizzou, Kansas rivalry. Now, some of them played in the first, you know, the game last year at yeah. Allen Fieldhouse um, and probably heard, you know, all the stories, but they, they don't have a touch point to that. Yeah. I think this is going to be a good experience for, for the Kansas guys of understanding it from just the, what they're going to experience at Mizzou arena. Cause I do expect it to be a raucous environment on Saturday. And to your point, I think it's going to be very different. And I, I, I think that's something it's going to be loud. It's going to be, going to be loud. loud. And, and we can touch on this just of our experiences, you know, going leading into a Mizzou Kansas game. It, it always felt different too, like leading into a game because yeah. you just knew the fan bases were so, you know, the, the history of it was, was always yeah. there a top of mind in the short distance. And it's, it's, it's state line, you know, it's Missouri yeah. Kansas yeah. and, that that carries some weight, and I, you mentioned Grady Dick. Like I'm sure Grady Dick, being a Wichita kid, like I, I'm sure he gets it, I'm, and I'm sure he will. You know, he grew up a Kansas fan, yeah. so I'm sure he he saw it. But I think this is an important time. Dennis Gates is in his first year at Mizzou, so this is his first experience with the rivalry, and he's had Norm Stewart come back quite a bit uh, yeah. over the last few weeks to, I think, shed some light on you yeah. know what what this really has meant to the schools dating back years. I think there's some teaching here. And as you know, as a coach, motivating is such a huge factor of coaching, yeah. right? Getting that yeah. inspiration and motivating when things get, you know, when you get into a lull or when oh, yeah. you, there's, there's, yeah. there's gotta be ways to motivate and get, you know, get an edge. Yep. Every coach wants to find it. I'm really cur curious how coach self carries himself in like team meetings yeah. with these guys. Cause he's coached in the rivalry. He knows it, but he's going to have to teach it. And, and, and it's just going to be a different environment environment for them going to Columbia. Yeah. And I think some of the, I mean, I think they're going to be pulling out some of the old clips. Uh, I'm pretty sure even just the, the social media aspect of it. And I mean, they can kind of help out the media team kind of helps out with that as well too, showing old clips, but I mean, you just, you can talk about it all you want. And I mean, until you just kind of get, get thrown into that fire, uh, you can, you can't really, I mean, until something happens where somebody gets hit in the head with a quarter, or <laughs> <laughs> that's a little different, yeah. Or they that's see right. their that's their right. mom's phone number just posted on a poster. I mean, like you, I mean, until you got to wake up at two a.m. in the morning because somebody pulled the the fire alarm. Like you really can't really get a gist of it. But I think the coaches are going to really try to do a good job. And you know, Coach Gates, he's going to be educated as well in this rivalry because again. You talk about motivation, like these are just extra tools that you can use to to motivate your players to want to excel in, and I will say play for something that's a little bit bigger than themselves, which is, you know, playing for the fans, playing, you know, for, for this rivalry and, and, and trying to get one for your for your school. So I think both teams are going to be, be ample, amped and ready for this game. I know the fans will. I know the fans will. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you, you touch on to just um, a big piece, I think, in this game to look for is is depth. And we yeah. talked about Kansas's bench, because to me, I think it's really interesting when you look at this team's Jalen Wilson, Grady Dick, Kevin yeah. and Dewan. Those four guys can steer the ship for Kansas any game and they could put their handprints all over this game and it, it'd be a runoff. The bench to me is the, the biggest factor that could sway yeah. if things get tight because Mizzou plays nine guys and one of those guys yeah. off the bench is Isaiah Mosley. Mm -hmm. uh, Aiden Shaw comes off the bench. You know, they, they trade Go Million, who's a transfer, but a, a, a elite level defender that can really make some things happen off the bench. It, it's going to be a little bit of a different game than obviously last year when we were talking about this matchup. I think everybody kind of knew 
you know, pick your score, right? Of what yeah. Kansas is going to do to Mizzou. I expect this to be a little bit more competitive. Um, yeah. and, and I think for Missouri, they haven't played. This is their, obviously their biggest competition, the best defense they've faced a championship pedigree program in Kansas. So it's, it's really unique of just where both these teams sit. Um, and how they just break down from a personnel standpoint. You, you, yeah. Kansas for, at the top has guys that can take over a game. Missouri, it's the depth. And they still have guys that if they play well, they've had four guys lead them in scoring at different yeah. times throughout the year. And they can really score the ball. Yeah. Can, and I think that's a, a big piece of this game of, of just what, what team really puts their you know stamp on this game in terms of pace, in terms of style of play. Yeah. Uh, in terms of how they how they dictate the tempo and the, uh, of the game, I think it's really going to play a big part in, in the game on Saturday. Yeah, and like you you talked about, it's it's going to be a good a good game, and this is going to be a a different scout. You know, uh, Coach Gates brought some guys over from Cleveland State with him, so it's a different scout than it was for last year for for Coach Self's team as well too. Um, so it, it, it's a it's a, a whole different animal this year with the Missouri Tigers. You know, seven of their guys are. I mean, I would say five of the seven are in double figures. One, I mean, I would count seven in double figures. You say they're averaging double figures because it's, you know, right around nine points, 9.2. But uh, five of those guys, five of their guys are in, in, uh, in, dub, are in averaging double figures this year. Uh, so it's a lot more balanced scoring than it was last year. So it's a little bit tough for Scout. Um, so you can expect that on, on that end for the Tigers, uh, for, for Coach Self to, you know, obviously be making – uh, 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 trying to make adjustments for for that behalf, but it's going to be a fun game. Uh, it should be a, a a more up tempo game, I would think. You know, obviously with M- Missouri's ability to score the ball better than they did last year, and they're defending as well too. Uh, it should be a good game, and you know what? If 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 you uh, you don't have to be a fan. If you're a Missouri Tiger fan, you don't have to be a Jayhawk fan, and vice versa. Um, but uh, the the fans know about. Uh, how how much it meant to him about this this rivalry and the border war. So I think it's going to be a really good showing between between two teams. You got both teams shooting thirty five percent from three. Uh, so yeah. both teams shoot pretty pretty consistently in terms of. Now I think with Missouri, it's more a variety of guys that can make shots, and and for Kansas, I'm obviously Jalen and and Grady can really shoot the ball, um, and could probably shoot Mizzou out of a game. I think it's really interesting. Mizzou's averaging over 90 a game. And again, they, they're they're nine and one, or excuse me, nine and oh right now. And they really ha- I mean, Wichita State on the road was a good overtime win. So a lot of that that those those numbers are against, yeah. you know, competition that they should have t- taken care of. But as we've seen, they got multiple guys that can score it. Des Moines Hodges at transfer. He's already had a 30 yeah. point game. Uh so I it, it is going to be I, I still think Kansas is such an elite level defensive team. I really am curious how this game. I think in the first five ten minutes, you're gonna really find out a lot because this game yeah. could be a tr- this game could be a track meet, yeah, or it could be a possession slug by possession. Fest. Yeah, game. it could be a you know slugfest. I mean? Yeah, it, it, and that's what's great about rivalry games is you just don't know how it's gonna play out. Yep, it's gonna be a fun. Like I said, man, this is this is what the fans I think they want to see. They want to be in a, an atmosphere like that. So I'm glad that the 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 border war and the rivalry is is renewed because. Uh, it's going to be a good showing and, and Dennis Gates got these guys playing, playing well. And for anybody, uh, that's what you want to see a, a good competitive game. I know the, it puts the fans on edge, but at the end of the day, all fans appreciate a good competitive game. Uh, I think whether the team loses or, or, or wins because you know how hard your guys played and how much they left on the floor. So I think we're going to see a really good competitive game. That was, that is definitely more competitive than when it was last year. I agree. Where are you watching the game? Uh, I'll be watching. I'll actually be doing some some studio uh, stuff for uh, okay. ESPN Plus. So I'll be I'll be kind of watching it in the field house in uh, uh, somewhere in the field house where it's lonely. Nobody will be in there. <laughs> yeah, you you won't get any alarms. You won't get fire <laughs> alarms pulled. Nothing like that. You'll be good. No, nah, yeah, we'll be good. <laughs> It'll be a fun matchup, Jeff. As always, appreciate your insight. Um, it's great yeah. to have the border war, man. I, I yeah, just I, as we've talked about this before, it's great for Kansas City. Any yep. you know, traveling across the country, seeing all college, college basketball and, and hearing about the rivalries, I just kind of deep yeah. down like Mizzou, Kansas. It's such a special. Yeah, rivalry, it was. So yeah. It's, uh, it's well, I can't say one. it was. I can't say it was. It's it's coming back. So it, it's it coming is. back. It is. It's coming <laughs> back. All right, Jeff. Good, good, good talking to you as always. Good, good always. chatting with you, and we'll uh, we'll catch up next week. Hey, you bet, but see you.